let me crack on. Um, I'll just go back and just explain that uh, a lot of the information that we're going to use during this webinar is um, taken from the OVM um, analysts. And OVM, an organization uh, within, uh, within Informa comprised of 150 um, plus analysts. And all they do is they spend their life really watching the industry, um, assessing it, generating research and actionable intelligence for the operators, for regulators, for, um, for vendors as well. Um, so that's very much a part of a, sort of a sister company, if you like, to Telecoms Academy. Um, so we're very fortunate to, uh, to, to be tied up with those guys. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at unified communications, first of all, um, and just look at the, the first step, really, that operators take when they go beyond traditional services. And when we say traditional services, we're talking about voice, we're talking about SMS if it's mobile, and we're talking about just simple connectivity. So the first step beyond that very often will be for operators to look at how they can do that better. And unified communications and collaboration is the first first step. Uh, we'll then look at things like the Internet of Things, some machine to machine, just look at the, some of the new opportunities which are presenting themselves in those areas. We'll look at entertainment. and education, comfortable, all of that really in around 30 minutes. So first of all, what is a, a digital service? And the um, main uh, thing to bear in mind is that a digital service in general is, is um, seen as anything that goes beyond traditional uh, telecom services, and when I say the traditional telecom services, I mean I mean that voice and the uh, the SMS, the uh, the text messaging, etc. Um, the analysts have, have very helpfully sort of categorised what a digital service might be seen as, and in this um, in this diagram, you can see that we've categorised as communications, entertainment, mobile commerce and payments, advertising and big data, cloud, machine to machine, and smart home. And then we've also started looking at, uh, at it in terms of the industry verticals. And then separately, uh, what we've also done is we've categorized it in terms of business to consumer, uh, business to business, or business to business to consumer. And, and, and this one sometimes can confuse people, uh, B to B to, to C. This is where a, a telecoms operator could help uh, a second business um, connect with their customers or their, their consumers. And, and that's a a growing and, and really important part of the uh, the picture going forward. So you see that there's a whole range of uh, digital services that we consider. Um, uh, you know, just a lot of areas that a telecoms operator needs to be uh, aware of and, and perhaps um, uh, developing their strategy in. Um, and, and in some cases, in a lot of cases, really, it's, it's too much, to be honest. Um, just at this stage, um, we had about 30 people on the webinar when we started, we're now up to about 50. So if I could just mention that we're going to take questions at the end of the uh, at the end of the webinar. So if the questions can wait till then, that'll be uh, fantastic. Um, the, the current situation is is really mixed actually. When we go around um, spending time with the telecoms operators, we're very often talking to them about what happens next and. Uh, a lot of the discussion is centering on what they're already doing. And um, just to sort of formalize that, the OVM analysts have done a, uh, a, a, a recent survey and we've asked operators, and here you go, uh, 100 operators in this case, which of the following digital service categories uh, do you currently offer? Um, uh, and the top three there is communications, digital content and entertainment, and uh, cloud-based services. So they're, they're the top three. But even in that case, you know, none of these go above um, 50%. And when we say communications, obviously we're not just take, talking about um, normal communications, we're talking about communications that go on 
go beyond the sort of traditional voice. Um, so we're talking about unified communications. Very often, even in that case, even in this case, it isn't for the consumers. It's usually for, it's usually um, sort of advanced services for enterprise. Uh, very often, as part of a, a bigger uh, sort of enterprise suite of suite of services. Uh, digital content and entertainment, where very often that will comprise IPTV or or, or perhaps a partnership. And cloud-based services, a range of cloud-based services. It could just be from partnering with Microsoft for the Microsoft 365 um, suite of services, right the way through to providing infrastructure services to other to other organisations. Um, as you go down this list, if we look at things like smart cities, um, only 16% of the respondents said that they are actively providing services to do with things like smart cities and and this is where it starts getting really interesting because society is moving on and there's some big moves in and around things like um, environment efficiency um, you, you can imagine in, in forward-looking governments and municipalities the world over they're looking at, at doing things differently and they really want to move the infrastructure within cities um, and even countries they want to move it forward and they want to move it fairly rapidly well th this survey is saying that actually telecoms operators only 16 percent of them have actually got any sort of strategy or any sort of work in those areas to help out those those mu municipalities so um, it, it's a really mixed picture in terms of where the telcos are right now in terms of digital services so the the, the first step really is uh, for most operators is to look at their current offering in terms of communications just take today's telecoms user and add a whole load of additional features to it um, so the services would be enhanced with instant messaging uh, actually knowing whether or not somebody wants to be contacted or even where they are um, uh, in the world um, adding things like conferencing collaboration just simple you know, just simple things like um, sharing your your screen. Um, a really good example here is to look at something like Vibro or Skype and say, you know, is this ahead of where the telecoms operators are? And if it is, then I, I think the message is that the telecoms operators have got to do better. They've got to not only match um, those over-the-top players, as we call them, but they, they've got to go one step further. At the end of the day, this is... The bread and butter of the telecoms operator just communications and, and really communications in telecoms in most instances actually hasn't moved on since the 1950s since we we, we defined those uh, uh, the, the technology for digital coding of of, uh, of voice so uh, unified communications and collaboration an awful lot of um, potential there for telecoms operators we struggle in that the handsets are still using the sort of legacy systems the handsets are still expecting to connect or um, I guess an operator would still expect the current crop of handsets to connect using the sort of legacy um, systems but the users of, of you know leapfrog the operators have said okay well as long as we've got a decent connection we're going to go over the top and perhaps the um, operator's best hope in terms of turning communications into a uh, a good advanced um, set of features in terms of digital communications is something like um, RCSE rich communication suite enhanced with the join um, branding um, uh, and the interface and that good old uh, nugget the IP multimedia subsystem um, but the users are sort of you know the, 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 they're not really interested in the technology behind this what they're seeing is things like this um, something like Cisco's WebEx um, on an Apple Watch. I mean, that's in terms of an in interface. You know, that's for the user. That's almost becoming expected. Um, to me, uh, born in the 1960s, this is still sort of a little bit like Star Trek technology to me. But it's you know, it's it's the watch is a phone. The phone is a a computer. The computer connects, and therefore you you're open to use over the top software on it so for most people these days this is no great no great shakes so that that's perhaps the first move it, um, into the sort of digital services realm i.e. beyond traditional 
telco services. Perhaps the second thing is to think um, to think about the Internet of Things and rather than human communication, machine to machine communication. So the Internet of Things, you know, we see this as one of the very next big things simply because the world over telecoms operators are seeing uh, markets saturate. So there's no new customers. Very difficult to make more money out of exi existing customers, even though they're using their phones more and connectivity more. It's difficult to make money out of existing customers, except where we pull together fixed and mobile and TV content, i.e. convergence uh, uh, and bundling, etc. So something like the Internet of Things represents one of the ways in which we might make incremental re revenues. And um, what's the limit on this? I'm not sure if anybody really knows, um, except the analysts think that during the next digital revolution, i.e. the one that started in 2015 to 2025, so the next 10 years, anything that can be automated will be automated. Um, when you start to think of it like that, you know, we are talking about a lot of things being connected together, either directly sometimes, but very often through the network, so which presents a massive opportunity for the artists. Now, the Internet of Things, when you start thinking about this stuff in terms of cities, it's not an activity that is necessarily the biggest opportunity for operators here. It, it's all that data. Because the data associated with running societies, workplaces, transportation systems is massive. Um, I'm assuming that more and more countries will want to keep that, that data local. There'll be a lot of information that needs crunching and analysing, um, but just access, security, all that sort of stuff. Um, the telecoms operator just seems to be in, in poor position. So in and around the Internet of Things, your digital service, uh, the digital service concept, operators providing services to um, other industries, uh, and, and, and consumers, for that matter, in this space, um, just seems like a, an absolute no-brainer. It's it's a really good opportunity for inc incremental revenue, um, and, and that sort of comes down to the consumer level in terms of things like the connected home. Um, in the survey that we looked at earlier, very few operators do much in this area, and yet you can go to some of the just some of the hardware stores, perhaps in North America and Europe and elsewhere. Um, and you can buy sensors, you can buy um, hardware that is already connected. And not only that, those hardware stores somewhere on their online system, so in their web pages somewhere, they'll even offer support. So uh, a really simple one um, perhaps is, is if this, then that. So a really simple over-the-top application, which just allows any user to put together a logic program to take information from sensors, from the internet, from um, specified information and operate devices. So one particular store in the US, for example, lots of sensors, lots of sort of all, um, grass watering, all that sort of stuff, alarms, um, supporting their users in a really simple way, just partnering with uh, an app developer called If This Then That. Um, where are the operators in this space? And, and, the, and the answer is generally nowhere to be seen. Um, so the connected home would, would sort of take the, you know, this, this big Internet of Things concept and just take it down to the consumer level just to show that this is you know, really uh, um, throughout the, uh, the extended ecosystem. Um, entertainment, infotainment and education. Um, to be honest, we could have, you know, even just scratching the surface, we could have spoken for about an hour on this but um, just sort of narrow it bring it down to a sort of um, simple discussion slide um, nature of digital content is really wide and varied so it's electronic media for download and or distribution um, content accessed in many different ways but very often by the internet so music videos files animation graphics images one big one there perhaps is virtual reality um, and this is where perhaps a lot of operators are starting to provide virtual reality headsets with purchases of, of, of um, 
uh, smartphones perhaps but what it breaks down to is entertainment information education and increasingly virtual reality simulation um, I think virtual reality at the moment is seen certainly uh, mainly uh, as an entertainment um, uh, system but I think going forward you know I, I always sort of explain that perhaps you can imagine firemen um, training um, for the job, i.e. entering burning buildings. You know, if you can simulate that, um, get some really realistic scenarios in place, um, the world of work for that fireman, you're suddenly, um, it, it becomes safe and it becomes, uh, 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 that they can tackle more scenarios just in a simulated environment for example and of course aviation have been using simulation for many years but um, th th they have to just because of the expense of putting pilots into into uh, uh, into passenger jets and, and, and simulating those emergencies you know they've they've been embracing this for decades so what we're saying here is as we move forward in time, your telecoms operators and the extended ecosystem we've got a we, we've got a um a, an opportunity to perhaps bring things like simulation into the wide, wider workplace um and into perhaps education etc uh, and in terms of digital content um operators have sort of got to grips with this because more and more operators are um extending out from either the fixed or their mobile base and they're becoming fully converged operators so mobile operators becoming fixed with tv um fixed operators becoming mobile with tv and we're seeing this more and more uh, and it used to be that that the end-to-end -end system was managed so you can see this uh, dotted line around these including the access network but increasingly you know telecoms operators are putting really good networks in place so the access network is good enough anyway the access network for tv type services is good enough so now the customer wherever they can get internet access they've got the choice do we go with a converged telecoms operator or do we go with netflix over the top do we pay money to netflix which reflect the worldwide market or do we pay money to perhaps a company like virgin where perhaps the price reflects the fact that they are fairly confined in, in in a smaller number of markets um and the dynamics of this are, are really interesting when you start looking at it because you have more and more customers are starting to choose netflix um but the telcos get it so the telecoms operators in terms of their digital service mix um they're adding netflix to their to their service mix um and of course we've got amazon and we've got a couple of other over the top players as well in terms of uh in terms of entertainment so we have looked at unified comms we've looked at uh, the internet of things we've looked at entertainment input um, and education um, mobile commerce and payments now this is particularly of interest to um, for example operators in Africa where the, their strategy in terms of mobile commerce and payments can really make a difference and really um, give them a, a, a really strong set of, of, of uh, com competitive advantage now uh, in terms of payments and the wider digital wallet there's an awful lot of potential in these areas um, we sort of concentrate sometimes in telecoms on things like mobile payments uh, and banking but there's all sorts of all sorts of things like you know parking fees ticketing um loyalty cards and vouchers uh, we can start including things like location based services so there's a, a huge amount to go out in terms of digital wallet um and pesa in kenya is probably the the most famous example in terms of telecoms where we took a, a country without too much of a banking infrastructure and we use technology via the mobile phone to facilitate money transfer backwards and forwards and it worked fantastically well in that market as soon as you take that into South Africa for example where there is a banking infrastructure um, it's a lot less compelling especially if you ask the customers to actually go into a 
because of security concerns, you ask them to go into a bank to to actually physically uh, get hold of the money. So, uh, in terms of the driver, drivers involved in this, uh, e-commerce or mobile money transfers, that sort of stuff, might get more traction in places like Africa than perhaps in Western Europe. I mean, if I next time I'm in London, I'll be using the uh, London Underground, but I used to use a, an Oyster card, which is sort of a you know, form of a, a e-money. But lately, I, I just use my Visa card. It's 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 got the touch technology, so I just use Visa. So perhaps limited opportunities in some of the more developed markets, but certainly in uh, some of the developing markets, digital wallet, e-payments, you know, uh, massive opportunities there. Uh, but already the over-the-top players, they've already got a foothold here. Uh, and in some cases, quite a big foothold. So again, for telecoms operators, looking at the digital services portfolio, um, the order of the day may well be partnering rather than um, setting up their own, their own systems. Okay, just moving on, uh, perhaps having a, a look at another aspect of uh, digital services, advertising and big data. Um, so sometimes this is uh, perhaps, I, I feel it's not as far advanced as perhaps we thought it would be by now. You know, we've been talking about this for um, t 10 years now, really advertising. Uh, big data as a concept is perhaps a little bit more recent. Um, but I think in terms of telecoms, we, we've yet to understand the nature of big data. And some of it is, is down to this volume. Um, we do provide big data training courses. I think our trainers uh, generally are of the opinion that uh, telecoms operators as yet are not really dealing with big data. We're dealing with some um, good analysis of data, but you need volume. You need to get the trends. You need to, you need to look at the data with, at the right speed. You need the right variety. And, and, um, I personally, I think that with big data, you need big emotion. I, you've got to understand what you're trying to analyze. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, the customer proposition, what the customer buys, how they buy it, all that marketing stuff is all about emotion. Well, what we're saying with big data is, Hey, you know, we want to take the customer's data and we want to make, we want to do some meaningful analysis on this and we, we want to use that to sort of drive our business. Well, you can't do that without understanding that customer proposition. So volume, velocity, variety. It, if you start crunching that big data in the right ways, and there's two aspects to this. One is the mechanics of um, getting the right data, housing it the right way, using it um, with the right sort of analysis tools. And then the second thing is uh, using the insights that you get from that. So there's really two separate aspects here. But if you get that right, you could start sort of marrying that with some of the technology. So for example, this is this reflects some of the work that the third generation partnership project, i.e. the technical guys that, that developed the uh, GSM and 3G and 4G um, technologies represent some of the work that they're doing with it. But in this case, um, specifically Qualcomm have taken a lot of those ideas and, and uh, put it into a, a really strong proposition. But this is something like LT Direct, for example, where we take um, a lot of information. So we use big data, but we also use discovery. We sense, we learn. So the handset itself is uh, learning um, from where you are, what you like, what your preferences are, all that sort of really good stuff. And it's using it via a really strong interface to interact in the right way, perhaps finding friends, perhaps advertising in the right way. I think I think perhaps the strongest way I can sort of put, put this is um, it, it reminds me of a demonstration that we saw at the Mobile World Congress this year, where we just walked up to a advertising uh, sign and all of a sudden on the advertising sign was some fantastic advertising and I thought wow I really like that and I remember looking at whatever it was it was advertising and think, thinking 
that is absolutely right up my street. And then talking to the guys that developed that system, I thought it was a really simple system and a coincidence, but no, what it was doing is actually looking at, at um, whoever walked up to the sign, uh, to the sign, took visual cues, looked at what you were wearing already, looked at age, all that sort of stuff. And, and it was contextual advertising. And in terms of using big data and something like this LTE Direct, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about using the data together with the right technologies and the right interfaces to make things absolutely you know, spot on in terms of um, advertising contextually, uh, etc. So, so it's a massive, perhaps some massive uh, potential in these areas. Okay, just um, moving on uh, now looking at the bigger picture because telecoms really is only part of a, a much bigger uh, world out there as we know and um, loads of organizations exist to make money and they're always interested in transformation themselves at the moment and they're looking at um, efficiencies and they're looking at um, perhaps ways in which they can do things better so the workplace itself is changing and, and, and telecoms companies and our um, uh, sort of ecosystem of, of connected companies um, we're, we're quite well placed to help them do that so the connected workplace um, some big companies perhaps like Cisco have done an awful lot of work on this but it's it's really revolves around things like cloud-based ICT um, it, it's perhaps absolutely nailing telepresence and conferencing which I, th I think very few companies have done so far it's things like home remote travel working for example bring your own device you know how many of us still have two three four devices um, things like um, device agnostic content and it's it's things like collaborative working so th this is key to it you know with connected workplace if companies get this right it can be can become some work can become something we do rather than somewhere we go and you're completely on board with that and most of these tools exist, um, but very few other companies are actually doing things optimally. Um, and perhaps telecoms operators, especially now that the consumer market is um, is saturating, you know, telecoms companies absolutely looking uh, to business to business opportunities much more than they uh, ever used to, and enterprise solutions. Well, surely one of the first things we need to do is bring all these tools together into a, a sort of single um, well thought out um, set of systems uh, and then just going up one level you've got the municipalities you've got the local government you've got national governments uh, we're talking to a, a North African operator at the moment who are really keen to help their government because the government's got a fantastic um, you know future site for not just connected cities but uh, and smart cities but s smart smart country um, and however that happens you know the telco needs to be a, a big part of that not just providing connectivity but if you think about all the assets that telecoms operator has in terms of trusted brand all those customers data centers with you know all the right environmental air condition all that sort of stuff in place um, that they're absolutely in, in poor position for this uh, just a very small part of it is connected transportation either connected cars um, so for example I believe the Google car needs a connection to even operate um, really interestingly connected cars if they need a connection to operate one thing they absolutely need is very very low latency you know, at the moment LTE 4G isn't good enough so um, pretty much everything I've been talking about or a lot of the opportunities I've been talking about need um, and need support from newer technologies including 5G and that's what 5G is really about it's about supporting all these new new activities including in this case extremely low latency so something like the connected car connected transportation integrated transportation systems um, perhaps some big opportunities there for uh, for operators 
Uh, and then just coming towards the last couple of uh, topics. First of all, digital transformation of other industry verticals. It's probably true to say that uh, a lot of what we've been talking about is is applicable. Well, I mean, as we discussed it, you've seen that it's applicable uh, to many different situations. But you can, I guess you can sort of focus a little bit. Um, and perhaps along the top there, we've, we're looking at industry verticals. And then down the side, we're looking at... Um, application verticals as well and you can see where where the where the intersect so smart cities involve business services involve government involve manufacturing etc for example um, I think in any one market we could probably do this in a in a very focused way and we can look at where the opportunities are but I think um, you know you can sort of back that up with research and and uh, and analysis. Um, here's just some work that Ovum have done, just looking at um, machine to machine connections, perhaps in the different in industry verticals. So, energy and utilities coming out pretty much on top um, to 2019, um, transportation, manufacturing. And these numbers are going to be wrong. Of course, they're going to be wrong. These are sort of best, best estimates. Um, but in any market, we can sort of look at look at the opportunities and try and assess them and we can use use research to sort of back up our ideas. Um, I think one thing is is absolutely certain though, um, agility, the speed at which we can respond to opportunities is absolutely key and, and therefore we need certain foundations in place to make that happen. And one of the big things is is cloud, cloud infrastructure. One, to help us to operate better as a company, but two, to help those companies as the other companies, the other industry verticals as they transform. We need you know, cloud, um, uh, cloud principles. Um, perhaps we can sort of leverage cloud principles to help them with their transformation. Um, so, you know, cloud provides on-demand self-service, broad network access, resource pooling, rapid elasticity, um, and it's a measured service. You know, a lot of really good, strong features that a, a company would look for from um, somebody who's going to help them provide their infrastructure as they, say, transform. Um, telcos, very often, up to this point, have been, for example, partnering with Microsoft for the Microsoft 365 software, but also we've been providing infrastructure so as other uh, businesses want to develop their own cloud services you know the telco with the data centers with the uh, uh, buildings that have been kitted out so they, they keep the right environment for you know um, the latest electronic kit etc um, we can offer infrastructure services to to other uh, businesses um, and then we've got to think about the way in which we provide, provide cloud services. You know, there are a lot of network security threats, not least, you know, these have become visible, not least in the last six to um, 12 months. Um, so whether the cloud is private, whether it's a community cloud, public cloud or hybrid cloud, you know, the telco is in an absolute poor position here. Um, the two major advantages are the networks on which the service is delivered and then um, critically a trust relationship with with the customers okay so what do the analyst view or what is the analyst view overall um, well the success factors really um, things like agility agile IT certainly a customer centric strategy internally within the operator you know, being able to, to collaborate across across ecosystems, um, continuous innovation, um, and also digital transformation themselves. So, the analysts think that operators should really reduce the digital service portfolios and perhaps focus more. Get really good at one or two things. So, get really good for transportation or get really good for for smart cities. Um, partnering partner or, or acquire to occupy a larger part of the value chain. Perhaps refocus the consumer digital service activities to make them an, an overall 
part of an overall strategy for data monetization. You know, not um, digital services for consumers. Sometimes it's about just making sure that that we are. Um, as well placed as we can be in terms of things like loyalty. You know, this customer can't possibly leave us because look at the extra things that they get. You know, not perhaps seeing digital services always as something that we need to make money from, but but perhaps something that beefs up our, our money-making activities and our, uh, our bundles. Uh, the analysts think, look, operators need to be clear about what they want to achieve from partnerships um, and structure deals accordingly and make... And this is one of the key things, make a distinction between those services that can be developed and commercialized independently of the opcos and those that are fully integrated in th into the opco businesses and treat them, treat them differently. Okay, that is really it. That's, I think, th by the time we got going and after the uh, communication issues at the start there, that's um, around 35 minutes just on the content so just a quick recap before i take you into the uh, into the question um room just a quick recap you know telecoms academy um our remit really is uh business of telecoms technology of telecoms absolutely we are going beyond the telco industry boundaries into a, adjacent um, industries now we provide a lot of distance learning programs as well, but some of the existing, some of the example courses that we've got coming up, things like positioning for the digital age, a mini MBA, which encompasses a lot of what we've talked about, including the best way of, um, uh, of achieving success, developing the digital services opportunity, ICT, unified communication and digital services, another uh, really good three day course, marketing digital services and the internet of things amongst many others. So if you want to get in touch, please do feel free to, uh, to do that. Um, if there's any questions,